TDD is one of those very rare software engineering practices that can make a real difference to the quality of our code. The problem is, is that writing tests first is a skill that doesn't feel very natural when you first try it. It's a skill to be learned and practiced, and there are some common pitfalls and hurdles to be navigated along the way. So here are some of the commonest traps that you're likely to see, and my top tips for avoiding them so that you can adopt test-driven development and improve the design of your code and enhance your skills as a developer. Hi, I'm Dave Farley from Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content here today, hit like as well. Thank you to our sponsors, Equal Experts, Octopus, and Specflow. Uh, they're supporting our channel, so please do support them in turn by checking out their links to, in the description to the video below. So what are some of the commonest mistakes that people make when learning test-driven development? Here are a few. First is chasing coverage. Writing lots of tests without really focusing on what it is that you need to know. I once saw a client incentivize their teams to produce 80% coverage. They offered bonuses to teams that managed to do that. And in the end, guess what? They got 80% coverage. But when we looked at the tests, 25% of them had no assertions in them whatsoever. So you need to, need to be really careful what it is that you're wishing for. The next is writing tests to pass rather than to fail first. These tests don't tell you anything new or give you any chance to improve your design, really. Often teams are put off from testing by the need to rework existing code to get it ready to test, and tests are designed to try to optimise the test writing process by reducing how much test code you end up writing, and so end up testing many different lines of code together. This ends up with horribly complicated tests that are tightly coupled to the code that they test, slow to run and nasty to understand. They also break whenever you change the code. These are often referred to as component tests, but perhaps a better name is probably just bad tests. Another place where people find testing difficult, because it is, is at the edges of our systems where our code interfaces with user interfaces, storage, or any other form of UI, really. This is a common problem, but there are good solutions that not only make the code more testable, but ultimately make the resulting design of the system better, too. Teams often struggle with the performance of their tests, particularly if they fall into the trap of component testing. Tests are often really slow because they access complex resources like databases, files, and networks. Teams often end up with lots of tests and then struggle to know where to look for specific tests. This is often a result of mistakes like naming tests numerically, so no one else really knows what it is that they're for. Tests often pass when they should fail, giving us false confidence in our code. One common cause of that is that they rely on exceptions instead of making an assertion of some kind to fail. I've seen many teams struggle to design and set up the data for tests, aiming to optimise the testing process because setup is, is expensive. They aim to rely on copies of data to have been populated or initialised before the test is run. The other closely related problem to this is trying to write one test that covers the whole functionality of a system, testing lots of different behaviours within that single test. In both cases, their tests are slow and often intermittent. They also make it difficult to parallelise these tests so that we can get the results faster. I've seen many teams trying to retrofit TDD-style unit tests to legacy code. This is an expensive, risky approach. There are some better strategies. One of the biggest objections to test-driven development is that it makes changing your design difficult when you learn new things. If that's the case, you're doing it wrong. There's certainly work to do when your design changes, and maybe even a little more work because of test-driven development. But if you do it well, test-driven development makes that work simpler and less risky. 
It's a little bit like complaining that fetching oven gloves is more work and so not worth it when you take a hot pan from the oven. You don't have to be stuck with having to write a new test suite when your understanding changes or you have a better idea. Perhaps the biggest problem of all though are tests that, Im that test implementation rather than the desired behavior of the code. These tests are slow, fragile, and ultimately only test that the code that we wrote was the code that we wrote. There are much better ways of solving these problems. If these problems seem familiar to you and you're struggling to adopt test-driven development, then please check out my training course where you can learn how to practice TDD and refactoring, how to write great tests, and how to use test-driven development to improve the design of your software and massively reduce the time that you spend fixing bugs and struggling with inefficient tests. The link is in the description below. You can also watch a free preview to see if you think that the course looks like it's right for you. So please do check it out. I believe that test-driven development is often undervalued. It's one of the most significant advances in software development practice that's happened during my time as a professional software developer. I think that it helps us to solve several big problems in software development. It gives us clear feedback on two important things that are otherwise very hard to see. Does our code do what we think it does? And is our design any good? To achieve the first of these, we need to adopt test-driven development as an integral part of the act of writing software. To achieve the second, we need to be sensitive to the messages that test-driven development sends to us. So let's start by looking at some tips for how we can make test-driven development integral to software development. When to use test-driven development. Begin from the assumption that you will use test-driven development for all new code. In this situation, always start with a failing test. If that's hard work and you don't have a clear picture, focus more on the step that you're trying to take. Be clear to yourself what the outcome that you're looking for is from your code. Now write your test to express that need. Where testing is difficult at the edges of your system, use abstraction. Your aim is to minimize the amount of code that's difficult to test. For the code that touches those edges that is difficult to test, I.O., storage, user interfaces, and so on, unit test the pieces, but use integration testing to validate the real operation of those, those interactions, but only in very simple cases. There's no need to test all behavior through those edges. And that gives you a leg up and a, a better way of into using test-driven development at those points. Start any new project with test-driven development from day one. It's the easiest time to start. Establish a continuous integration system to run your tests and give you clear feedback on their behavior. If you are adopting test-driven development in a pre-existing code base, learn and practice the skills of refactoring that we've discussed. Adopt the discipline that you will aim to always leave the code base in a better state after every commit. Look for refactoring tools that can make this easier. Modern IDEs usually have some support for these kinds of features. Take a look at the JetBrains offerings, Eclipse, VS Code, Xcode, and then lots of more. Aim to adopt the discipline that all new code will be created with test-driven development, even when you are working in a pre-existing code base. But aim to be cautious when you're adding tests for pre-existing code, and only do this in areas of the code where you are working. Refactor the code to the point where it's easy to see how you can now add tests. Don't aim to retrofit TDD style unit tests to legacy code for the sake of it. They're too disruptive to the design. Using TDD to evaluate the quality of our designs. Adopt the three mindsets of test-driven development. Consciously aim to design the public interface to your code to be clear, clean, and simple when writing your test. If your test is difficult to write at this point, treat this as a signal that your design isn't good enough and think how to improve it. Pay close attention to these signals. 
Treat writing the test as a key design step in your approach. Think carefully about examples, tests, that will help you to evolve your design in tiny steps. Consider writing a brief list of ideas for tests that you think will help get you started. When refactoring at the end of the test-driven development cycle, this is the time to focus on making your implementation clear, elegant, more general, more robust, whatever it is that you want to do. So the red stage, writing the test, is about designing the outsider's perspective of your code. And the refactor step is mostly about designing the internal implementation. Aim to make green, making the test pass, as simple and easy as you can to keep this step small. Don't confuse these steps, and particularly avoid the temptation to test for implementation detail. Every test should be aimed at evaluating an externally visible behaviour of your code. Mentally test your test by imagining throwing away your implementation and replacing it with a completely different one. Does the test still make sense? If you can't do that, your test is too coupled to your solution. The properties of good design. The modern software engineering ideas for managing complexity are a great guide to help you to steer your design towards excellence, in my opinion. Use your ability to safely and confidently revisit and modify your code as a marker of its success and the quality of your design. Prefer design choices when you are writing tests and when you are implementing features in your code that increase modularity and cohesion. There's a balance to hit here, but the sweet spot is very sweet indeed. Separation of concerns is a great tool to help you to achieve this balance. Abstraction is another valuable tool that helps enormously to improve modularity and cohesion. And one of the biggest costs in software development when you get it wrong is coupling. So treat the boundaries between modules and services, components and subsystems as special places that you guard a little bit more carefully, as ever with great tests. Consider design strategies like ports and adapters to insulate parts of the system like this from each other. Defend these boundaries. Be aware that changes here are more costly and riskier than changes elsewhere. Aim for these points in your design to remain more loosely coupled where you possibly can. Consider contract testing to help to protect these points in the system. There will be times when you find that you want to change your design. Your understanding of the problem changes or you just have a better idea of how to solve the problem in front of you. If your code is modular, well tested, and you've worked to separate the concerns, it will be a lot easier to make the changes at this point. But still, you may need to change tests as well as code. This happens a lot less when you practice true TDD than other forms of testing, but it still happens sometimes. My advice at these points is to try and break your restructuring into small steps. Where possible, keep your tests passing for as long as you possibly can as you prepare for the move in your code. Use your refactoring tools and techniques to make these small steps, running tests in the area of your change to help you to maintain a clear picture of your progress as you make it. When your tests are the wrong shape to protect you, this is always a pain. And in general, the tools for managing complexity will make this pain less frequent and less severe. But when you are faced with it, don't forget all the times when your test made life easier, because this is one of the times when it's not. At this point, you do have a bit more work to do to re-establish them in the right shape. As I have already said, I think that TDD is an important practice for great software development. It's a cornerstone of what I think of as a genuine engineering discipline for software. By which I mean that it helps us to build better software faster and amplifies our ability to do that. I hope that you find some of this advice helpful. And remember, if you would like to learn more detail on how to solve all of these problems and more, please do check out my training course. Thank you very much for watching.